Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of this little mini-series on how to create a movie player that will play videos in a row and uh, will mix between uh, the one that it was previously playing and the one that it will be currently playing. So, sounds trivial, uh, it is uh, apparently not. So, in this second video we will not arrive at this stage, which is anyway uh, a bit buggy. So this is kind of the end result we want to achieve. When this ends, it will simply mix with the next one. So when the video, uh, there is one second uh, fade time, so when this video arrives at the end, you should just mix and play the uh, other one. But at a certain point, it will give us an error for a reason that I still have to, um, to debug. So this will, this we will see in the next videos. Um, anyway, yeah, I leave you with uh, the video in which we go on from the patch that we seen in the last one. And I hope this is useful as always. And let me also remind you to maybe like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, check my Patreon where you can get uh, patches and uh, support the creation of these videos and also talk with me and so on. Okay, so enjoy the video and uh, see you soon. Ciao. Hey everybody, as it turns out I've deleted uh, the first video of uh, this uh, second part. So the one that I registered last day. So I'm redoing the first part of this second video um, from scratch. So this is where we left. I think this should be where we left with the last video. Okay, so what we want to do now, uh, what we were setting up to do is to basically, with every time we press this bang, we basically select a new video. So let's see how we can do that. We basically connect this uh, to the call and this to the other call. So, since this call is full with the video files that we got uh, from the max folder, this should work. So, let's try. Uh, is this on? This seems to be on. Oh yeah, the problem was that I was basically going too uh, too far here and there is no, there are no 38 elements inside this call. So, this brings us to do something like that, get the length of this list and setting this as the maximum counter for this uh, for this counter. So every time we count, now we should go back to zero, then one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so this seems to be working. Now, um, the problem is that I actually want to get all the videos that are inside this media jitter folder, and this includes the MP4 videos. Uh, which I cannot get if I give it the type mov. Um, this is why I've uh, sorted out, I just googled and I've uh, found this uh, regular expression that allows us to get uh, um, all the files that have extensions mp4 and mov. So instead of specifying here the type mov, let's just give it an empty type so this will get all the different file types and then let's attach these uh, uh, here. So between that, and then we have to get the substring, if I remember correctly. So let's let's give it a try. Okay, yeah. So we get substring here, and uh, let's try. So now we should have got also the MP4 files. Doesn't work. Um, why? Maybe it's not the substring. Let's use a print object to see what we're getting out from these. Uh, ah, we get actually out of the third output. We actually get the. Uh, the names, so this should actually be working. Why it is not working? So what is the problem? Why does this not uh, have... Oh no, actually it has also the mp4 file. Sorry, I'm stupid. I'm a bit blind, at least. So this actually has the mp4 files inside. As you can see, I wanted to get especially the chicken file because it's full HD. And um, I want to show you a problem that we get with the... Uh, chicken file that I actually show you in the this is not a deleted file this I have still from the last day so this I will show you in a second the, the, the me of the past we show you in a second that so basically yeah maybe let's clear also the the call every time we make a search so we don't need to do it in the beginning because this is actually the beginning the call will be empty so let's actually do it only when we uh, do a search 
So let's do like this. We just need to clear one because anyway they have both the same content. So let's see. If we make a search, now we have all the movies. We should be able to get also the MP4 movies, like the chicken one. Let's see if we get the chicken. Ah, this is the beast. It's also nice full HD video. And uh, chicken is number two. So let's try. Yeah. Here we get the chickens. Okay, very well. So now I will leave you with the me of the past. I think it's a bit more confusing than the me of the present, but hopefully, um, hopefully not too much. So enjoy the rest of the video. Ciao. Let's actually attach a play bar object to these uh, JIT movies. Now you can see when it arrives at the end, uh, it's not really easy to see that with this file. So let's use the other one, which is uh, the bees uh, sunflower MP4, which is number 17. So let's do it like that. Okay, so let's actually connect this to the output. Now you will see when this arrives at the end of the file, it will make a little pause. So let's take a look. Yeah, it makes a little pause and then restart. Now this is super annoying. This is super annoying. And it took me a while, it actually took the help of Rob Ramirez and some other Jitter fellas that helped me uh, in fixing this, because actually what we have to do is to load the first second and the last second of the video in the RAM in order to avoid this behavior. And as you can see, the behavior is that when the video arrives to the end, it makes a small pause and then it starts again. Okay. So in order, to, in order to load the video in the RAM, the first and the last second, we cannot just say load RAM like this. We have to first uh, wait that the video is loaded. So when the video is loaded, the JIT movie object, let's actually delete this, the JIT movie object will output the, mess, uh, back, the message read with the name of the file that it just read. So let's see, for example, let's read a new one. Uh, we get the name of the movie and also follow it by a one, which means, okay, I've read the movie. So let's actually just take th this one here and say select one. So when we receive this one, then we want to send to the JIT movie the message load drum one. Okay. Now let's use a print object. So let's connect this here. Ah, and first we need to give it a cache size because otherwise it doesn't have any cache uh, in the RAM to load the videos inside. So let's give it uh, as an attribute. Let's give it a cache size. So cache size of uh, one giga. This is in gigas, so one should be okay. Ah, and this is apparently only. Uh, this is apparently only um, PDDL related. So probably on Mac either you don't have this problem or you uh, can solve it in a different way. But uh, for everybody using Windows and BDDLL or also Mac and BDDLL, I think this is possible. And this is uh, what you want to do. So let's actually give it a cache size of 0 0.2 giga. Let's do it also here. Cache size 0 0.2. Okay. So now we have a cache where we can load the first second and the last second. So let's see. When we load the movie inside this object, it will first uh, print from uh, here, it will first output from the right output, read with the name of the movie that it just read and the number one. Then it will send out a message which is load RAM with the, uh, the amount of seconds that it read in the RAM, I think. So let's root also load RAM. And after, the, after we, we read the, the, the RAM, we have to tell it load RAM minus one, which means uh, after we read the first second, we need to read the last second, which we simply can say by putting a minus in front of the number. So this means read the last second of the movie inside the RAM. So we attach it here, but the next time we will receive... Uh, uh, so let, let's see actually what this will do. Let's load the movie. Uh, exactly, continuously keep on loading RAM because it receives the message load RAM and then it banks the message load RAM which will continuously which continuously 
trigger the message load RAM and uh, trigger the output load RAM. So this will not do for us. So what we want to do is to use the message one bang. The message, uh, the, the object one bang, it works like this. So it works like this. Uh, when it receives a bang, so let's do a little example. When it receives a bang on the right inlet, the cold one, it will the next bang that enters from the left one will go on the left. Otherwise, they will just go on the right. Okay. So what we need to do is to say, okay, uh, when you first read the file, then send a bang uh, in the right inlet of one bang. So the next bang, when we receive the load run message, will actually go to the load run minus one, which will. Uh, read the last second and then the, this is it because the next banks will just go out of the right so let's try again let's read yeah and that's it in fact it just reads it one cool uh now that we read all the all the first and last second inside the ram we need to start the movie because as you can see the movie is actually not started now that we read it inside the ram so let's send the from the, this output here, let's actually send the message start to the JIT movie. So this should do it. Let's see. Yeah. Cool. So, perfect. So when it finishes reading the file, we want to uh, start the movie file. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's basically copy the same thing for the other JIT movie object. So let's connect these uh, here, here, and here. Okay, cool. So every time we bang a movie, yeah. So now the problem is uh, that when we read the movie, let's actually set the loop to zero, because we don't want to loop actually. Oh, I said zero, but I wrote one. We don't want to loop these videos, we just want to play them once. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Okay. And yeah, we just loop once, and then that's it. The problem is uh, that before we. Since uh, when we click on this bang. And the movie gets played now, especially if the movie is a full HD, it passes uh, some small amount of time. And, and anyway, we cannot mix between these two videos if we just load the next one when the one is finished, right? So what we want to do, it is actually to load the next video, for example, when the previous one is a passing half. Of its length right so when the video is passing half of its length we will load the next one so we are ready ready with the next video we don't start it immediately we just stop it and we await that the other video arrives to the time uh, the total length of the video minus uh, the fade time that we want to put and then we can start um, the other video okay this was probably a bit confusing but let's see that in practice and we'll be clear so we need a way to know when the video is passing its half of its length so there is a simple way to do that we can send to the JIT movie object the message time in milliseconds this will print out here was it time milliseconds let me just check the the reference oh I think it's get time milliseconds because this is an attribute time milliseconds it's not a message that we send so we want to get it okay cool so this is the time in milliseconds that uh, uh, the movie is currently playing am I right yeah so where it actually arrived so what we want to do is to get the, du the duration of this movie in milliseconds which we can get uh, by getting the movie durations in seconds yeah so we do something like that when we finish to read uh, the file, so when we got uh, this bang here, basically, before we send it to the to the load RAM, then we want to do something like this. We want to know how many uh, seconds this movie is composed of. So 
so let's do something like that. Uh, no, get time in, no, watch was it? Get seconds, sorry, I think it's get seconds. Yeah, exactly. So this is amount of seconds that this movie, uh, the duration in seconds of this movie. So we need to basically multiply this by 1000. So let's root also seconds. We need to multiply this by 1000 in order to have uh, the amount in, of time in milliseconds. Right? So when we have the amount of time in milliseconds, uh, we can simply say, get time milliseconds. So let's send a metro actually from, uh, from the world object. So we will send a bang for every frame. By default, I think it's 60 frames per second. So we will say, get time milliseconds. So we are continuously getting the time in milliseconds um, of the movie playing. So, yeah, exactly. Every frame we get how many milliseconds pass since it, did, uh, it was playing. So, let's root from here also time milliseconds and we will have this number here. Okay. So, basically, when this passes half of this, so let's say this uh, divided by 2, and then let's say it's starting to get a bit crowded here. Let's say when this is greater or equal also. So let's do something like that. When this is greater or equal than the half, then we are going to load uh, the next movie. Okay, so let's use a change object to not get continuously 1 and 0. Uh, let's use a print object also. So, let's start the movie. So, when it arrives at the half, we should see a 1 being printed here. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Oh, yeah, sure, because we need to send... Uh, uh, okay, so let, let's roll the movie again. Okay. Passes the half. Uh, ah, oops, sorry. I attached it to the message object, but this should actually be attached here. Okay. So let's start again. Zero. Passes the half. One. Okay, cool. So zero. Passes the half. One. Okay. So basically, when this passes the half, we want to load uh, the next movie. So let's use a send message and say send movie. Ah. Uh, 